Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Comic Shop Talk on the Late Night Collectors community. I'm your host, Nico, and join with me today, as always, is my co-host, Chris. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Good, good. Getting ready for this snowstorm. Yeah, uh, storm yeah. again and again, uh, what, part three? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Storm of the century. <laughs> but uh, uh, we'll see what happens with that. But, you know, hey, listen, it's Friday. I'm happy to be off work. So I'm happy to talk about some comics. I have a couple of beers here. So, yeah, really looking forward to this. Highlight of the week, that's for sure. <laughs> for sure. Uh, so this week we're talking about the new comics that came out for the week of March 1st, 2023. Uh, as always, guys, if this is your first time checking out the channel here, make sure you to subscribe, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, that thumbs up, hit the notification bell. If you want to be notified of when these videos do come out weekly, they usually drop every Friday or Saturday. Normally, you can also follow us on Instagram for up to date details of when these episodes do drop at at late night collectors community on Instagram uh yeah you can hit us up in the comments but yeah this is a weekly comic book review show where me chris talk about the comics that come out that we've read week to week give you uh you know our reviews on them you know talk some comics and as always spoiler warning be forewarned we do talk about what happens in a lot of these books we try our best with some of the bigger spoilers maybe not to spoil them for you but you know some things have to be talked about we are going to be talking about them and we're going to show the art from the books as well give you some preview art give you an idea of how these books look and uh, all that good stuff. All right. All right. Well, spoiler warning. There's no spoilers this week. <laughs> Cheers. Let's Cheers. talk comics. Yeah. Yeah, nothing nothing big in terms of spoilers, I would say, probably this time around, eh? Yeah, nothing. Well, nothing I'd consider big, but <laughs> who knows? I don't know, man. I thought it was a decent week of comics. And uh, first up, we got here on the docket, we got Human Target number 12, which is the finale of this 12-issue maxi series that has come out over the last little while. What would you think of this? I thought it was a good finish to the story. You know, kind of to figure out still what's going on. But it's like, you know, it's like a low-key, slow-paced story. And uh, I thought it was all right. What did you think? I know you've been, I've just been reading that. I've been kind of in and out on this, kind of picked it up near the end. Mm -hmm. But I know you've been following this all the way through. So what do you think? Uh, I mean, I, I I thought it was a great, great end to this uh, series. I think it was a great series overall. Um, I mean, the artist, uh, Greg Smallwood, just did a phenomenal job throughout the whole thing. And I think he really stuck the landing. I mean, we kind of seen this coming for the most part, what had occurred in this issue for the ending, because it's been kind of ending in that way for the last couple of issues, I would say, since it was revealed that uh, Ice... Uh, uh, that's her name, Ice. Uh, am I? Uh, am I saying? Yeah, isn't that like Fire and Ice? The, the yeah, two? It is. okay. For some reason, like I, when I said it there, I was just like, "Is that her name?" I was like, "Yeah." yeah. <laughs> After it was revealed that she was the one that accidentally, you know, killed, um, uh, you know, killed uh, the human target here, right? And um, you know, but by the end of this, she came in to find him uh, dead, and I uh, left a note finally that said, "I love you too" on the bed there for her to be found, and. Uh, and then she basically, I guess, froze him and like made him like into ash, essentially. I guess she like because she then started carrying him around in this like liquor bottle, uh, which was very fitting, I guess. Because yeah, was, gosh, uh, yeah, some good stuff there. Now that uh, you start yeah. talking about it, reminds me what he did with the with the ashes. That was pretty good. That was an excellent scene, and I even love the way it ended. And and uh, not only that, like there was a whole scene where. Martian Manhunter tried to come down on her in terms of the investigation after he's like, oh, yeah, well, uh, you know, Mr. Chance there, the human target, we have to look into his murder now because, you know, he never actually solved it. So we're going to have to open that file back up. Right. And, and there, a lot of Justice League members were targets in his case. Right. And she basically like almost like she canceled fucking Marshall Ma Martian Manhunter for his yeah, like, did she like threaten him with fire or something and yeah because it was revealed during the course of his investigation that he hooked up with fire there the one who's uh you know hugging her oh, okay right? okay I get it now yeah and uh there there yeah in another issue it was revealed that they had a you know they had a fling essentially and that and and um and she basically like tried to like you know bring that up to him. It's like, yeah, I, I think that I'm gonna take over this investigation. He's oh, like, so okay. she did have some dirt on him. That's why she got away with that. Okay, yes. I, didn't, I didn't realize that when I was reading it. Yeah, that's why he was humming a humming a. He's like, oh, I, I, I don't know about that. Like, you know, she was just basically just about to fucking like, cancel Martian Manhunter here. She's just like, well, 
you are supposed to be the team leader and you did fucking have an affair with one of the members. So I don't really know if you are the right person to conduct this uh, investigation either. Like, you know, you, you, you yeah. know, you, you, I know you know, she basically like threatened that fact and she's like, yeah, I'll take over the investigation. Don't worry about it. Because obviously if he kind of went digging it is possible that he came up with the fact that she's the one that accidentally killed him. Yeah. Right? And, and uh, there, and also tried to kill Lex for that matter. Right. Because that's of course, how he got poisoned in the first place, right? But that's why I thought it was such a fitting end, man. Like that, and then, and then, of course, fucking uh, Guy Gardner there, who of course is, you know, always has a thing for her, who continues to pester her throughout this series. Uh, she, she got hit. He got his come up and once again as a way, you know, getting knocked out by the bottle, essentially that had his. Yeah, ashes. Well, the ashes. <laughs> I thought that was awesome just because she was just like, I don't know what to do with his ashes. Like, well, I can put him in the water. You like that? Or I can do this. Yeah. And in knowing how much he hated Guy Gardner and knocked him out a couple of times in the course of this series. Right. She was just like, oh, that was fitting. You know, she's like, that's perfect. Like the way he, like, <laughs> she took him down with him one more time. Right. So that was that was awesome. Right. And uh, and then at the end, uh, he was like uh, he had t mentioned to her before he died. He's like, listen, you want to do a. Uh, do a favor for me. Uh, uh, and then uh, he's like, there's one thing you can do for me when, if I'm going to pass away. Um, and uh, it turns out it looks like she was going to target Lex again here at the end. Yeah. Poison. And you see, you see him kind of taking a sip out of that glass and her have a smile on her face at the end of it. So it's almost as if he wanted her to see that through still for what he guess he did to her. And the reason I actually wanted to take him out in the first place. And at this time it wasn't actually going to be, was it going to be him who obviously was portraying Lex as he actually died? So I thought it was cool that they followed it through. It is a DC black label book and human target character isn't a huge character. So the fact that they actually killed him off here at the yeah, end, for sure. I thought that was good. I was like, okay, at least he didn't pull some fucking cockamamie bullshit. Yeah, good thought there near the end, you know, when she's kind of looking around, anybody could be the human target because he's that master of disguise and, you know, he dropped something that, you know, like some stranger would drop something off that would remind her of him and they go oh, okay he's still alive somehow but it sounds like that he's dead dead and then his yeah. final act is is killing uh what's with lex luther i thought that was good too yeah it was a really fitting ending i thought and like i said it was a, i'm i'm just glad it ended well it was the perfect i think amount of issues happy having it as a 12 issue series for this type of character and this type of story and the art was consistent throughout and the writing was really well done so uh, no complaints from me i'm gonna double dip and get the collection when it comes out i'll probably wait for that oversized deluxe hardcover that i'm sure it's going to be collected in eventually and uh add it to my shelf because i think it's one of the better things that tom king has written so yeah uh, like I said, I bought this, I think, from a, there's an art room cover and maybe issue four. Yeah. And it pulled me in, you know, and like I say, it's a decent story. Like the art isn't over the top, but it's all great. It all fits the tone of the, of the issue or of the, of the series. Yeah. So what'd you give this one? I'll give it a four. I liked it. 4.25 for me. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. So you got to go check it out, guys. Um, it was a really, really good series. Uh, all right. Next up, we got, let me just see here. Hollow's Eve number one, which uh, was kind of a, a last minute read for me. Read this one online and uh, wasn't planning on it originally. Did you read this online as well? Or Yeah, I read this online. I, I think there was an art room cover I was eyeing, but then, you know, when the cuts came, I go, ah, maybe I'll just let this one ride. Mm -hmm. This Halloween Eve character, you know, didn't really uh, you know, speak to me, let's say. But I, you know, I, the, the issue was it was surprisingly better than I thought. Yeah. I think her powers are a little bit freaking kind of wonky. You know, they're a little bit overpowered, I guess. She just puts on these, you know, random or not even random masks, but she's got a bag of an infinite bag of an infinite masks or something. Yeah. But you know, the the way it ended up with her turning into a werewolf and then the other person, uh, the person, uh, the the security guard that she killed. Uh, turns into a werewolf, werewolf. I thought that was a bit, bit of a good swerve. Mm -hmm. You know, interesting story. And, you know, it's good to hear what's going on with Chasm and she's planning to try and bust them out. But what I'm not, what I'm wondering is why wouldn't uh, Madeline Pryor just let Hallow's Eve go in prison with Chasm? Like, it, basically, they have Chasm in almost like a, a dream world. They let her go in there. They can both have fun in there together and just chill out. Mm -hmm. But... I guess it wouldn't be much of an issue then. 
Yeah, and I mean, like, they didn't say with the release of this, because they tend to do this with a lot of these series these days, but you always, they always, um, you know, bring it out as a potential ongoing, but I can't see that this series going that long. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this is like a five or six issue miniseries by the time. Oh, isn't this, wasn't this just a miniseries, or? I don't know if it was solicited as one. I think they just kind of put it out as like, this is issue number one. Cause you know how sometimes it would be like, four, like one of five or something. Yeah. I, I might be wrong. I don't know if it was solicited as as mini series, as series, but like, yeah, was, I couldn't, I couldn't see this as an ongoing series. No. Uh, um, that being said, I agree with you in the sense that like, I just took a flyer on it last minute just cause it wasn't a huge week. And, uh, and I, I, you know, I thought it was decent. I thought the art was actually pretty good. Yep. I, I thought the story was, was okay. Um, uh, you know, the whole twist with the fact that, yeah, like you said, the, the guard turned into a werewolf because she kind of scratched him in werewolf form and, uh, you know, bringing back the beyond corporation once again for which was where we last saw her prior to like in the beyond era of Spider-Man. Yeah. She was a big part of that, uh, along with, uh, you know, before he became, um, chasm um right um then yeah, riley yeah so you know um it was all right i mean like again i'm not he like i'm not i might read more uh, I, I might read more online because it wasn't a bad issue by any means i just i didn't you know i think it the good thing it had going for it is despite it being a character who i don't really know too much about or care about too much it kind of left it room for them to tell an interesting story somewhat with an unknown character right so i think it had that going for it to it was actually worked to its advantage because it's not like i can be like well this doesn't seem like spider-man or something like that you know what yeah. i mean like it, it, it's it's all kind of brand new for me so like they can tell me whatever the hell they want about this person or this scenario and i'll be like okay um, but yeah, no, it was decent. Um, yeah, I might read more. We'll see. I mean, depends on the week it comes out. If it's a big week, maybe not. But um, for what it was, I thought it was it was uh, it wasn't yeah, bad. Yeah, I thought the art is decent there. You know, just like you know the way you're scrolling through there. Yeah, like I had no complaints about it. Yeah. You know, if I did buy it, I don't think I've been upset about it. But I'm not at the same side. I'm not upset that I didn't buy it. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would you give this one? I'll give it a three point seven five. Same, you're in my mind. Yeah. 3.75 out of 5, absolutely. Yeah, it was, it was decent. We'll see. Uh, next up, uh, Punchline, the Gotham game number 5. This is the penultimate uh, issue, yeah, right? Penultimate, yeah, 5 or 6. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a decent story, but I don't think Punchline can carry a, carry a series without it. Add- yep, yeah. go on. I was going to say, can I ask you something? Because like, I didn't read this, but putting the art together for this one and tell me if I'm right or wrong in this. I don't know if you've mentioned this about previous issues. It seems almost as she's a fucking backup character in her own fucking story in this. Like yeah. I was just like, there was like four pages. I felt like that she was on in this issue. I was like, I was like, why, why isn't there more punchline in this issue? Like, it seems like there's so many other characters involved. Like you said, yeah, more about like the alley town and like, you know, all the gangs, I think. And like you know, if this was supposed to be a vehicle to kind of you know push Punchline to the top, it's it didn't succeed as as that. You know, it's like I guess a nice ending that really wants you to get to the to read the sixth issue. But these this Royal Flesh Gang of those big whatever I don't know what they are, they're ace in the holes. I don't know, they're just crazy, like some nanobots or something. It was nice seeing Nightwing in there. That was a surprise. But like I say, those were all like like you say. Now that you mentioned that she does seem like a backup character in her own story. Right. I was expecting more out of all this. You know, it was my first kind of series with punchline headlining. I thought it, I thought it'd just be better. And it's, that's so, so. Yeah. Well, and the big thing is the Joker shows up at the end. So I guess that's a, a big thing in the punchline yeah story but we'll see how that goes you know what though like i mean it's good in the sense that like at least they're trying to do stuff with her like so many comic fans complain about the fact that oh you don't do you don't do new characters or you don't make new yeah. characters and then when they do new characters no one fucking supports them because they're like who the fuck is this and then they don't buy the book and then it doesn't become successful or they don't put good talent on it and yeah. you know i I'm, I'm sad to hear like you said this hasn't been that great in the in the grand scheme of things but at least they're actually trying to put out mini series with this character and trying to push push the new character right because like you know they gotta 
sometimes you got to build some of these characters up, right? Or get a writer who actually has a good voice for them before they actually, hit, you know, strike something interesting about yeah, them. Yeah, you know, for get, sure. Get a good run with them, right? So, um, you know, I, I don't know. We'll see what the future is for her past this, right? Because she hasn't really been featured in the Batman books lately, so... Uh, yeah, I, guess, I don't think it's find space for it in, like, the Catwoman books or something. You know, yeah. I think she'd be a good uh, villain in there, or, you know, at least, at least, you know, I don't know if they've decided if they want her to be a true villain or they're just trying to kind of make her a villain that becomes redeemed and, you know, try and do another Harley thing or something. But I don't know, it's still, uh, I'd, I'd give it a 3.5. And, uh, you know, once again, yeah, you know, I think I bought the physical copies of this. And meh, that's about it. Okay. Uh, next up, we got Venom Seventeen. That's one of the ones I did get. A there it is. This is one here. Yeah. Basically, the only things keeping me in this story: some cool covers. And there's some weird storytelling here. I guess I don't know if he's he's still in limbo or something, and he's in time, but not in the present time. And I guess the the art's pretty decent there now looking at it there, but just the story was just kind of whacked out. I think at one point they try and separate the storyline as if he does one thing or if he if he wins or if he loses, he's fighting I forget one of these kings of limbo or something. And I don't know. I don't know. I still want I still want to like Venom, but I don't know, they got some roundabout story to try and get Bedlam, I think, to fit into where to where Eddie Brock saw or entered that garden of tranquility or whatever they call that garden that he goes to. It's just all these roundabout stories because all those kings in black were all Eddie Brock. So I don't know, they're trying to do a lot of weird stuff to make things fit. Mm -hmm. And it's just getting a bit wacky. But I don't know. I think I'm in for a few more issues and uh I don't know, maybe through the summer of symbiotes or whatever, see how he fits into that. And if not, this might be just cutting it. Uh, well, like I said to you, I didn't read this, but I thought the art by Cafu on this issue is was really awesome. Like while putting this together, I thought I thought the art was really good. But like, I also think that um, it seems like, again, like I because I, I've dipped in and out. I've read a few issues for certain events that were going on through this. And like I put the art together when you talk about it and. It seems like he said, like a lot of it seems like they're always fighting in some sort of nothingness realm. Like there's never, yeah. it doesn't seem very grounded this story. Like in terms of like, you know what I mean? Like uh, it's not, it's not a street level type of story whatsoever. Like it's always. Well, like, that's it. Sometimes he's the king in black, and sometimes he isn't. Like he has access to this king in black power sometimes. Yeah. But sometimes like he forgets he has them. Like here he remembers he has them somehow. Okay. When he's fighting, I don't know whatever that dark on or whatever that guy is. Yeah. Like that and then crazy. you know, was, like look at this. This is looks crazy to me. Yeah, that's crazy <laughs> part there. And then I think this leads into the that Thor is with Venom and Thor. But then there's all this stuff in the dark, yeah. and I'm, there's a Venom hand talking to him or something. You know, as a as a big reveal for the next issue that doesn't really, mm. you know, have me sitting on the edge of my seat there that he's talking to his hand. Yeah, that's fair. But I don't know. It's still. This series hasn't been going any which way I thought it would be. So what'd you give this one then? Uh, this is a 3.5 too. Nothing crazy. They, like I said, I think the art's great. You know, these covers that they put out kind of keep you going, but the story's kind of off the rails. Yeah. What's that? All style, no substance or whatever the hell they say, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, unless somehow this comes together at the end, like, go like, where, wow, you got to read everything back. You know, there's like some, uh, Lovely. like Jamalan yeah. thing, you know, it was yeah. a random reader that does this or no, Ewing. It's not a bad writer, this viewing guy, isn't he? Al Ewing's really good. He was the guy. Yeah, who... like, unless he's got some great plan there that he's just, you know, stretching out or or it's getting stalled by all these, you know, whatever, these series that he's got to freaking shoehorn into his series. You know what I mean? Yeah, because um, Al Ewing wrote a, a very popular Hulk run before he did this book, like uh, Immortal Hulk, which is a big book for the few years that it came out. Like, that was, yeah. uh, like he, he made the Hulk good again a lot of people were saying um and then kate's kind of came on the tail end of, of that run like he was he was the one that took over after ewing but like that's kind of where he made his name i think for like uh for for his marvel stuff really was off yeah. of that series right for a few years so 
Uh, yeah, you know, I guess we'll see, man. Uh, I mean, he's the one who's doing that Fury one shot that we talked about last week. That's kind of becoming yeah. like that. So I like, I like Al Ewing, but uh, I don't know. It might just be the character or whatever, right? Yeah. Like, you know, so I don't know. Maybe, just, maybe he's not speaking to me on this one here. Yeah. All right. Next up, I got uh, Phantom Road number one, which is the uh, first issue from uh, Image Comics, a new Jeff Lemire series with art by Gabriel uh, Walta. I think is his name and uh, Gabriel H. Walta. My apologies. <laughs> uh, this was real. This was good. You know, I think uh, I think that what I've said about a lot of other Jeff Lemire stuff I've picked up lately, um, where I always usually like his stuff, but I've dropped a couple of things lately because of the fact that I felt some of them were very sparse in terms of like how much he was putting in each issue compared to maybe some of his earlier efforts. And maybe he's just gotten way too busy. Cause I know a lot of his shows he's been involved with and in a lot of his comics actually coming to life on the big screen lately. Right. Like he was involved in, I think in a lot of the production of sweet tooth this past year for Netflix. And uh, I know his things coming out on the CBC next month or maybe this month, actually Essex County, which I'm looking forward to checking out. It's a show of but like his first, first graphic novel that he did that was very popular back in the day is going to be a cbc show i think like a mini series or something this month and um so yeah like he's been i think busy with a lot of his stuff right so i don't know if that's as a result of that or just because of the series that he's been doing he's really hasn't they, you know they've been reading better i feel like in big chunks as opposed to issue to issue and i will say that this issue uh despite that being the case as well i felt like this was a very quick read it kind of hooked me already with this first issue in the sense, like I really liked the tone of it and, and I enjoyed it. Like I've liked this artist. He's worked with him before and he's worked on some things at Marvel before that I've liked, but you know, he's not everyone's cup of tea, maybe this type of style, which I could understand. But um, this is kind of reminds me of like a, like if you like Stephen King or you like supernatural things like that in that vein of type of storytelling or stories that he kind of does, like with a supernatural kind of like, you know, twist to it. Um, I think you would be into this type of story. So this is uh, a truck driver we're introduced to. He, he you know, there, he has this whole scene where he gets off the road in his truck and he goes into this diner. And there's some weird guy and that he meets in the bathroom where it's like the last place you want to meet a weird dude on the road. <laughs> so, but that really, I feel like, it was just a weird scene. Like, I don't know if it has anything to do with the actual main storyline yet, but we'll see. But yeah, he kind of, he's singing and he makes like a weird comment to him. Like, while at the urinal, which again, is the worst place you want to have this interaction with somebody. So that scene, I thought was interesting. I'd, I had to put up the art for that. So then, uh, you know, but then when he leaves the cafe, he gets back on the road and he's, just, you know, he's doing his truck driver thing. And then you kind of get some flashbacks uh happening at this moment in time too that shows him arguing with his wife at home when he actually is off the road at home and and there were some scenes where like his kid was there i guess watching them fight and she's saying oh you think i don't know what you're transporting around i can smell your clothes or see your clothes or something like that like it seems like they haven't really got into it yet but he might be transporting drugs or something of that nature i'm not really sure but like they kind of alluded to him being in some sort of dirty type of business with the with the truck driving and uh and again he sees like a vision while he's having these flashbacks or thinking about it of his son like in the mirror so again he might be dead and maybe that was like a phantom type of moment where he, like he's seen or like a ghost moment where he's seen his like his son in front of them on the on the on the windshield right um they haven't really gotten to that point like to explain all that fully but i'm i'm guessing the way the story's going that might be where it's headed where like over the next few issues you might see like flashback by you know different types of flashbacks that might explain that right so anyways he he kind of comes to uh, out of this daydream there uh, and like he he veers off the road because he almost runs into to a car because of all this shit that's going on right and and uh then the car he goes up, up on the car crash and he sees like there's a woman survivor but the man the, the guy who i guess was also in the car maybe driving is dead like his body's just lying there he didn't survive but there's a woman there that's sitting there saying oh god oh god like she got some sort of flashbacks of i guess somebody from her past that may be dead as well and it seems like hence the phantom road title of this book maybe that wherever whatever strip of road they're on at this point in time, maybe you see people from your, the, your past or the dead or like, a, like it's like they've entered a realm of, of the under, like, you know what I mean? Of like afterlife essentially like being on this road or something like that. So these two people cross paths and all of a sudden he sees some sort of like, 
I don't know, like bone totem thing in the middle of the road. And he's like, what the fuck is that? And he went to like touch it. And this flash happens. And all of a sudden it looks like they're in like the, uh, the afterlife essentially. And there's like all these dead zombie, like creatures, like walking around. And then the guy goes up to one of them and he's like, well, you know, what the hell? Like, where are we? What's going on? And this thing attacks them. And he ends up fucking beating the shit out of it. And he's covered in blood. And, and then he runs back up to the woman as he's trying to run back into his truck. And they're trying to hide in there. And then it kind of cuts to this like scene. And there's like phantom road, like a, you know, like a cinematic kind of thing. Right. And then, and then you get like a one more page at the end uh, that I guess, you know, it was really cool after they kind of did the ad like this of him just surrounded by a bunch of fucking dead bodies that he beat the shit out of like, like these zombie creatures with his crowbar and he's like, ah, well, now what? Right. <laughs> like, so, like, yeah, I was like, I was like, you want a way to set up the issue, like, the, to end on for you to be like, oh, man, now I'm in for the second one. I was like, that was well done, like, very cinematic, very, like, set up really well and interesting, like that. I could see this becoming, becoming like something like a mini series or something on TV. You know what I mean? It felt very like Stephen King. And I, so that, if I had to guess, that's kind of what they're doing. They're like in the realm of, uh, of, uh, the dead or something now on this road. I guess they somehow, you know, traveled over or something like that. So anyways, yeah, I thought it was a good first issue. Like I said, it felt light. It was a really quick, quick read, but to the point kind of cooked me by the end of it. And uh, yeah, I'm in, I, I give it a four out of five. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a, a good debut issue. And uh, I was happy for that because I feel like the last couple of things I talked about, about Jeff Lemire is like one of my favorite writers on this show. I haven't been vibing with as much like that little monsters one with the vampires that I talked about and certain things on here. Right. But uh uh, yeah, this one was good. So I hope it, it continues to be that, that, uh, enjoyable. Uh, next up we got Rogan Gambit. Number one, another kind of last minute edition. I was, wasn't sure about this one, but I was like, I was happy to see Chris that our, our, the artists that did exterminators that we were such a big fan of there did the art on this book. And I, I was like, I was like, Oh, I'm like, that's cool. I'm like, okay. So I, I, I was like, I like rogue. Don't love Gambit, but I was like, okay, I'll check it out. I'll give it a chance, right? It's just a light week. What'd you think of this? I thought the art was great, of course. So yeah. that's the only reason. Once you told me that uh, that Carlos Gomez was on it, you know, I'll give it a, I'll give it a read. You know, I think he's got a good, a good style for lighthearted. You know, nothing too, uh, too gritty. Let's say. Yeah. And I don't know. It's like there. Yeah, that's that's a nice page there. You know, he does draw, draw the draw rogue very well. I guess. Yeah. But as for the issue itself, I once again I'm glad I didn't buy it, and uh, you know I thought it was an okay story. I, I like I say I'm not a big fan of uh, Gambit personally, and at least they didn't lay in too thick on his uh, Cajun accent there. And I don't know, I'll probably just keep on. You know, I'll read through these issues online just to see how it goes. I liked it. I had fun with it. I thought it was just light and fun enough. Like you said, I think the art is a perfect companion for that. Like, I think like, uh, you know, I think that's, I, I, again, I didn't read it. I didn't read exterminators, but it seemed like that was like a more light fun X book as well. Yeah. In sense. Um, you know, like I said, I don't love row. Um, sorry, the gambit either, but I like how like, the angle of him in this story was kind of like he was a bum like he almost like puked on her and he kind of got his ass kicked and then the mother came around and she didn't seem to like him so like they weren't really glorifying gambit all too much in this issue so i was like okay uh, if the, I, I thought the tone was just right kind of kind of for that kind of thing and i and i love the art i think it's carlos gomez guy um uh, I, you know, please keep doing X books or whatever the hell you want over at Marvel. Cause I, I really like this artist a lot. Like, I feel like the first time I really noticed his art was when you started reading exterminators and now I'm, I'm a fan. I, I think, I think he's excellent. This artist. So yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with it. I, I liked it enough. I, um, you know, it wasn't too, like you said, it was, it wasn't too much going on, but I think it was just light and fun enough with good art that I, I might just continue reading it online. So we'll see. Oh yeah. And what's his name? The, um, they found uh, that trance, that guy who like, um, I guess they couldn't get a hold of Nightcrawler at this moment in time because I don't know why they would just use him, right? But he's another guy that can just teleport and stuff like that, I believe this dude. Yeah. And, uh, you know, who the hell knows what Destiny's up to, though? I can't trust her, really. She's like, I can't tell you anything, but just trust me. Yeah, just trust me, yeah. <laughs> What'd you give this? Uh, I'll give it a 3.5 once again. Nothing, uh, nothing special. Um, I'll give it a 3.75 out of five this one. 
Yeah, I liked it. Uh, but yeah, I, I think you're right in, in the sense that the big takeaway is Carlos Gomez. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, next up, Where Monsters Lie, number two. Uh, I talked about the first issue, really enjoyed that. Uh, and then, Chris, you said you had caught up and uh, and read both of these, right? Uh, so what'd you think of this? Yeah, you know, it's a good story there. I thought uh, all those serial killers were in for a, a tough ride there when all the police showed up in the town because there's only like eight of them. So it's not like there's a whole, you know, they're not super powered or anything. You know, and all the cops showed up and go, oh, how are they going to get out of this? You know, I thought there'd be some sort of uh, sneaky or... I don't know, there's some sort of way that they get out of it, but they just get out of it through pure, pure brutality. Yeah. And that, and that little kid that, that ratted on them, yeah. and, you know, he's telling the cops, like, what the hell, why are you taking me back here just to show you these houses? <laughs> I know, and then they leave him in the back of the cop car and put one of the killers back Yeah, they put one of the killers in with them. He's like, what are you going to do, you crazy? <laughs> and I that's hilarious. I love that stuff. And, yeah. you know, just all these, why they... Like, you know, I guess you can't can't say why, but, you know, you figure these costs would be going on mass, not just in groups of two, and all of them are getting just freaking wiped out. Like that that little puppet there, too, just freaking... <laughs> I, just I love... know what that puppet's about, but I love it. I know. No, I just love, too, how... Uh, um the kid too even when he ran out of the car he like ran up to like a bar and he's like oh here's some yeah. here's my salvation there's like a growling creature in there like, i don't know if it's yeah. like a big dog or what the hell is in there and he just runs away from that and i i, I also like too how they made the connection uh the reason why this cop is so hard for taking them down like he's like uh is is because he has encountered two of them in his life two of these serial killers he has survived encounters with uh, the cop that you get introduced to at the end of the yeah. last issue that basically brings this whole squad here. But again, he's not ready for this whole group to just be here. It seems like, like he, by the time like he comes out of the house after talking to the old lady, like ringleader of this group of serial killers, yeah, the whole squad is toast. Yeah. The fucking clown guy has a fucking rocket <laughs> launcher. It's not rocket launcher. Um, plane. Yeah, he's, just, he's just like maniacally killing them all. It's crazy. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, I gave the first issue, I gave a five to the debut issue. Just, I was like, wow, this is awesome. Um, and I gave it my favorite book of the week. This was a solid follow-up to the first issue. It wasn't, oh, yeah. like, I wasn't as, I think it didn't blow my socks off as much as the first issue. Cause now I know what the series is about, but another great chapter in this series. Yeah. I, I really, I think this is a really good series that might uh, be under a lot of people's radar under the radar for them. And I think if you're into horror or if you're just into like, you know, like a different type of story, something like this. Yeah, just wacky. Yeah, and it's funny too because, like, at the start of the issue, you get like the the whole rundown of all the characters, and like one of the guys, like I said, I mentioned the, the last issue, his name's Fuckmaster. <laughs> like, like, like like, <laughs> there's like a there's like a puzzle master dude, the guy who's like yeah. uh like um like what do you call it? Not uh like a saw type of guy or something like that. Yeah. It's fun, man. He's uh, clearly having fun with this story. And I think it's, uh, yeah, that's right. even in the beginning, you know, like when the, when they see all the cops are coming, like you see them kind of sweating about it. I go, Oh, what are they going to do here? But no, they just freaking come out guns blazing and freaking just kill everybody. Yeah. They're just like, it's go time. Like <laughs> there's like stabbing people. Right? Yeah. It's pretty awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. The one guy was, he's got the hammer there and the cops are looking around and power just whops him in the back of the head. It's like, Oh, good stuff. Well, I'm glad you liked it, man. I'm happy to hear. Because, yeah, it's a fun read. Yeah, cool. What did you give this one out of five? I gave it a four. I thought it was good stuff. Same. Four out of five for sure. Yeah, good issue. Uh, next up, we got uh, action. Oh, sorry. Batman versus Robin number five. So this is the uh, conclusion of the miniseries, which I guess crossed over with the, um, what was the other thing you just read? With the Lazarus yeah. Planet and Lazarus all that baloney. Yeah, yeah. So what did you think of this? Yeah, this whole series has been freaking just crazy. Like, I don't know. I don't know what you thought about this last issue, but I thought it was so hokey. It's, I just can't even, uh, can't even put it into words. You know, like if they're banking on this Lazarus planet to really up to you know jumpstart the DC universe, it's like wow. Yeah, that's crazy. And you know, with Batman dying, and everybody's got to say, "I am Batman," to give a little piece of their life for us to heal him or bring him back to life. Like, how many times has this guy freaking died in like the last year? Just leave the guy, let the guy live a little bit. 
I uh yeah, they basically just did the spirit bomb at the end and they just pulled yeah. the life force from all it was a very hokey moment that we've seen done a lot in other things, like where they're just like everyone just every, every normal person basically just came together in order to save Batman. Yeah, Batman doesn't deserve that. <laughs> That's the only thing I'll say about that. It was like not only did they did that happen, and then then the end on a fucking hug between Damien and Bruce. Which okay, if he was a more lovable character, I could understand that. But Damien's a a little shit. He always has been. Like I mean, like and and he's mostly a hard ass. So like even having a lighter moment with him there, like I get it. There, I guess they're trying to build like some like even I I, I liked how they like he he was willing to sacrifice himself for his father there. I, I'm like okay. Okay, like I, they're trying to, you know, build this character up. I get it. But I also just didn't like how like this series actually started off, I think, very well. And it, yeah. ended, it ended with a fucking like, you know, what yeah. I mean? yeah. And it's because they bogged it down with that Lazarus Planet event, which I didn't know that that was the that was the uh, like the point of this series was to just basically tie it into like everything. Yeah, else. it'd be like the Lazarus startup. I mean, not only did the Batman, the Superman World's Finest lead into this. Then this also tied together with the fucking event with like a million different issues and different things going on. And then not only that, like it also was like included things that happened in the Robin series. And like, I'm like, don't make this mini series the anchor for like five different other events of th of in series that have happened in the DC universe. You could have just did like a little mini series outside of all that. And I would have been much happier. At least that's how it felt like at the start yeah. of this mini series. And it did start out strong, you know, with, yeah. with, uh, Robin trying to kill Batman. I'm like, oh, how are they going to freaking walk this back? And, you know, they this start out with him trying to kill him. They end up with them hugging or something. Like, fuck, come on. I know. This was kind of cool. I did like how they all multiplied themselves. Like, I liked how yeah. he did the magic stuff, the monkey. Well, was that the, the monkey prince or. Yeah, I thought you know, that was. Kinda... The, yeah, the way he did it, though, like, he pulls hairs off his arm and they all turn into that. Come on. Yeah, yeah, I know. Very true. <laughs> it's a nice picture, but the way, the way it came about. I will say that Mah Mahmoud Azra, the artist on this, though, did a great job throughout the whole series. And it's a shame because I think this is a very forgettable story, especially yeah. when it comes to compare. Yeah, here it is. Here's everybody like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a shame because I think uh, I, <laughs> I think it's a very forgettable mini series in terms of Batman yeah. like stuff. I will not be double dipping on this one. Like, I, <laughs> sorry, I didn't even show the issue. I did get it. Like I bought the whole mini series. But like, uh, I, I just don't like the fact that the last two issues of the series were directly tied into that event. I don't think that they needed to be. I don't know why they did. Uh, it certainly didn't make me buy them or read them. And it actually didn't Alfred come back in the beginning of this series too. That was a big pull. Yeah, but then it turned out Alfred, but yeah, but they like yeah, exactly. That was a thing. Yeah, so I don't yeah. know. it's it's it's, it's it, it ended with a thud. Unfortunately, uh, what'd yeah. you think? So what'd you give this then? I'd give it a three. Ooh. You know what? I'm going to give it a 3.5 because of the art. Okay. Yeah. So I would probably be very right with you, but I like the art artist on this series so much that I, I got to give it a 3.5, not based on story though. I mean, I think that this is a, you could skip this one guys. If you guys didn't check this out and don't even bother with any of the Lazarus planet stuff. Yeah. Uh, Batman versus Robin. You don't need this stuff, honestly. Like, so. yeah, this is, it almost makes me feel like the Batman is a free, like the Batman series is like almost like an else world now. Cause how could all this stuff be going on in his life here? And yeah. uh, whatever. But anyways, uh, next up we got action comics, 1052, Chris. Yeah. So these are, I guess the new format there with there's three stories in there. The Superman story is pretty decent. we got Superman fighting Metallo and, you know, some good splash pages there. And if that was, if, if it just went to action comics and it was just that, I think it'd be fine. There's a, a Power Girl story where she's still psychic from some of that Lazarus resin. I don't think that's the best use of Power Girl, but the art's decent. I don't know. The stories are so so. You know, I want to see what's up, what's going on with Power Girl, but I don't think I'm getting like kind of true Power Girl stories. So, right. I let that ride. I don't even know what the third story was. So, that's, I guess, what's forgettable. Yeah, I think I'm out on action. I'm just going to stick to Superman, I think, because I don't like this whole, like, three-story type uh, fucking... Yeah, like, if they're all three great stories, all for it. But, like, you know, the, the main story is pretty decent. And, uh, I don't know, but 
I think that's Philip okay. Kennedy Johnson, the guy who was writing it prior to this, that's continuing to do a story with him, right? I, I believe yeah. that's that the War World uh, writer. Yeah, okay. Oh, might be worth checking but, out. Other than that, you know, maybe I'll just read this online. I think I've got a few more issues okay. um, pre-ordered, but I don't know. Maybe I'll stick with Superman. I'm still it excited. Was, it was a really good first issue. I was just yeah. like, I, I actually thought about it even more since we recorded. I was like, you know what? Yeah, this was a this was a decent issue. I was like, I'm got, I'm actually looking forward to reading some Superman again right now. So we'll see because I it's been a while since I've read Superman proper or any of them. Right? I know you've been yeah. reading action, but. I uh w when he went to War World or whatever, I just didn't I didn't follow him there when that happened, right? So I just didn't bother. So it's been a while. So. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, we're not big fans of the backup stories, and basically, there's more backup stories. Yeah. Which, so what'd you give this one? Do you think I'll give it a three point five? Like I said, the uh, the Power Girl story is decent. Uh, that Superman story is okay. Okay. Uh, next up, we got Harley Quinn twenty seven. This is the last issue of this writer's run, uh, Stephanie Phillips. Uh, who I guess we talked about twice this week. She also is the one who wrote uh, Rogan Gambit. But this is the last issue of her run. She's been writing this since the start of this uh, uh, this run, essentially. So 27 issues end. And uh, and next issue, we get a new writer, a new, uh, new big artist, apparently, is going to be joining in. So we'll see. Yeah, she's really good. The person who, uh, her name's Sweeney Boo. Interesting mm. name. Uh, but she her art's really good. Christine's gotten a Harley commission from her before. Uh, yeah, I think some covers. It's uh, and that's the artist for the comic, like the the yeah. issue itself. Yeah, the wow. interiors. She's not just doing the covers; she's doing the interiors. And the she this is a big gig for her because they haven't really given her like a a gig as big as this in terms of like an ongoing series, I think yet. So this is this is this should be good in terms of the art at least. We'll see. We'll see yeah. how the story pans out. But what do you think of this conclusion to the uh, the Harley who uh, who who laughs storyline that they had here going? I was okay. You know, I can take it for what it is. There's a lot of that fourth wall breaking that just made things too convenient the whole time. Like I think they leaned into that a little bit too much. Yeah. But it's everything, you know, with, oh, I got to find our Harleys and or find our Ivies and stuff like that. But I think the art was freaking great in this one again. I, you know, it, it makes a bad story better. I'll say that much. Yeah, I mean, I know like we've been it seems like we've been off and on with every other arc with this uh, with this book for a while now. Uh, some of it's been great. Some of it's just been OK. Some of it has just not been good. Um, I thought this arc, at least the first half of it was really, really good. And like you said, like it kind of, I think, went on too long with this whole Harley who laughs gimmick the last few issues. But that being said. I like the way it ended. I like how it went to the fourth wall breaking type stuff. I like how they just talked about it being a story and this is it was going to end on her terms and everything else. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, so yeah. like I, as a writer, if you just want to, if you know, cause like, like we just said, we kind of were feeling burnt out on this kind of story and we we're just like, okay, let's just get on with it. And if this is her final hurrah on the book, I thought this was a fitting way to go out on her run. So I, I thought this was, this I think felt right for a Harley Quinn book the way this issue ended. So I, I quite enjoyed it actually. And I, and like you said, I like the art and uh, yeah, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I wouldn't say this is the best Harley run I've ever read, um, but I think it's been, it's had some high, it's had some. Um, yeah, definitely had some, some yeah, high point for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, that was, you know, that was kind of cool. I did like that. And uh, you know, it seems like, Everyone was happy by the end of the day in this one, right? So we'll yeah, that old woman Harley, that's decent. You know, I hope I see her around more often. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what'd you give this one out of five then? I'll give it a three point seven five because I thought it's better than just some of the average issues. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you there. Three point seven five for sure. Uh, and then lastly, we got Spider Man six. Oh yeah, there's there was my Harley issue. Sorry, I keep forgetting to show my issues that I got here. Oh, 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 all right, don't confuse no, me. Spider-Man six, yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man six. What'd you think of this one? Oh, fine. The best thing is the last line of this comic, where it's finally the conclusion of this. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know this Bagley guy. Like maybe he just can't draw what like when there's so many different spider characters in there. Like he drew that one page that referenced kind of the stuff from the last issue and i thought that page was awesome again yeah and then the rest of it it's just i don't know like, I, I tried to look with it new eyes because i thought his last issue was so great and this when i go but you know i don't know i don't know what's going on here it just 
I, I gotta say, I did enjoy this moment though, where they're like in disguise and she just starts singing. <laughs> made me laugh. And then I also, I did enjoy, I don't know, like I feel like after that, even though that silk issue was very far removed from like this main storyline, that last one, uh, I don't want to say it's taking the complete turn where I'm like, oh, I'm loving this now. I just like it kind of reinvigorated you. Yeah, yeah, it kind of grew on me a little bit as a result. And I really, I just like the little touches of like, I, I guess this was the animated Spider-Man that shows up here. And then like in the next, in this next page, I'll show here, you had like an eight bit. Like, oh, that, video that, game was that one thing I eight doc. I know he says beep. That's I why like, if they <laughs> but, do kill the whole series or the kill the, this, whatever the spider universe, I hope that car stays around. And I hope that eight bit guy stays around and the rest of them, I don't know, they can all die. I don't really care. Yeah, yeah I just, I, thought was, I just like the way, like, like he's just walking around because he's just like a computer, like a, a computer generator. Yeah, he's just all for it. And he doesn't do anything. <laughs> I don't know, man. Those, like, between those couple of gags in this one and some of the visuals, I, I'm not going to say I didn't enjoy it because I did. But, like, overall, was it great? No, it, it was fine. But, like, I just, yeah. I, those little things, I was like, okay, like, this is at least worth the price of admission. I got a couple of chuckles out of this one. So I was happy for those moments. But overall, like, the whole thing with the, like, they cut open Moreland in this. Yeah, like, that Moreland, he freaking turns pretty quickly. Yeah. Like, okay, well, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go kill Silk now and then like just <laughs> out of the blue. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, don't tell him I'm a leech. Okay, oh, I'm a leech. I'm from the toad leech of totems or something, the totem leech. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah, there's not the eight big guy just standing there. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. No, I love that. That's why, like, I think they read out of actual Spider-Man that they they made up in the Spider-Verse shit. So they're like, oh, we got to think of, like, all kinds of forms of Spider-Man now. A video game one. That's why I'm yeah. like, I think that other one must have been, like, an animated Spider-Man. I don't know. Like, and they even had the reference to the to the movie Spider-Man in an earlier issue. Right? Yeah. So, like, they must they must be like, okay, we're going to use, like, every version of Spider-Man now. And they, yeah, I thought that was going to be something bigger when they, uh, when they kind yeah. of talked about the peter tingle and things like that but it just never went anywhere no although in this issue they alluded to still waiting on yeah. somebody so, so might be maybe that's going to be the conclusion maybe. Maybe that's what they need in that last issue next issue i guess we'll yeah, see they're still, yeah they're still looking for more spiders i guess the car and eight bit spider-man went back to across the universe to find uh more spider people yeah yeah i guess so <laughs> but yeah so what'd you give this one Ah, uh, fuck. Yeah, 3.5. Nothing crazy. I, I might give it a 3. Point. What saved is that one issue where or that one page that kind of brought it back to the end, but then was where you're cutting up Moreland and all the all the spiders that he's eaten up and all the universes are coming out. I said, oh, come on. I'll give it a three point seven five out of five. Like I for the for the uh, for the eight bits <laughs> for the eight bits. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I liked that. I was like, what is this thing? <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's going to do it for the books that we uh, wanted to talk about that we read this week, guys. Um, let's quickly check over some comic solicitations for May 2023. Uh, we have the image ones here. And normally I give a shout out to comicreleases.com, but for whatever reason, they never uploaded their image stuff, even from last week. So I pulled up another, the actual image website here for you guys. So let me just bring this up here. But yeah, still shout out to comicreleases.com. That's normally where we talk about our solicits from. But uh, let me just see here. I'm going to pull that up. And. Uh... Ooh, is that 8 bit Spider Man? Boopy? Yeah, that's him. <laughs> that was him back there. All right, here we go. Okay, can you see that? Yeah, yeah, it's all there. Okay, so let me just go past here. So. So yeah, um, let's see. I think I guess the trades and stuff are mixed in here with the issues the, on the layout of this site. So this is one in particular I'm definitely going to be picking up here. Arcade Kings number one. This is by art, written and drawn by Dylan Burnett, and this seems to be his first thing that he's writing and drawing. I'm a big fan of this guy's art. I think this is going to be like a three issue oversized issue series that's coming out. Um, uh, I really like this guy's work. He was kind of he did. 
he was the artist who who's worked with Donny Cates on a few things prior to this. And he was the guy who basically drew Cosmic Ghost Rider for him, like in his own miniseries with Donny Cates. So he's a he's a Canadian guy. I've met him at the shows here in uh, Toronto and um, r- really great artist. So, you know, this just sounds interesting to me. It seems like it's just going to be a story about a, like a bunch of things that he might be interested in, like arcades and, you know, um, it seems like it's going to be like a video game oriented type of like, you know, um, uh, you know, I guess story of some sort. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I don't really know too much about it, you know, but I, I am interested in him as an artist. So I, I am going to check this out and it's only like a three issue series or something. I think they said, so, uh, what else we got here? I don't know if this is something Epic number one not too familiar oh yeah no i i don't like this guy's art particularly so i don't know if i'll be checking this one out but this is about uh outsider perception creative thought takes physical form with only a handful of individuals known as epics able to interact with this wondrous hidden world i don't know Does anything this look interesting to you yet chris not yet Okay. Well, it looks like they got a uh, Terminator cover for this one. <laughs> I think that's what they're trying to do there. Uh, what else? And that's an Eminem show. That's <laughs> weird covers. Okay. Uh, well, Eminem, Eminem covers are supposed to be like uh, big. And the uh, one with Spider Man and Eminem. Yes. There, yes. An eight Mile cover or something. Yes, I did see that one. That was a special release that came out on his website. That's right, where they're battling each other or something. But this is like, I guess, an homage to the Eminem show cover, it looks like, right? So that's kind of interesting. Uh, Savage Strength of Starstorm. Uh, this is the first issue of this by Drew Craig. Uh, orphaned amnesiac high school student Grant Garrison is just attempting to navigate his present and recall his past when a meteor decimates his school. In the yeah. rubble, Grant discovers a strange artifact from another galaxy. Yeah, so, eh. Yeah, it doesn't... You know, yeah. I, I do like that they're trying to do more image superhero type stuff now, though, but, you know, at the same time, it's like, yeah, it doesn't look that much interesting to me. And yeah. that's Saladin Ahmed, Star Signs number one, uh, something about constellations and Zodiac, and I'm out. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, still going strong here. Super massive one shot. This is this whole like he's got a lot of books coming out. This fucking guy, this uh, the, the, in this world now, right? The radio- yeah, the super massive stuff supposed to be. I don't know if it's going to be a big deal, but they got a lot. Of, seems to be a lot of groundwork done because it's all this Rogue One or not Rogue One, Rogue Sun, right? Uh, or Radiant Black and a whole bunch yeah. of different characters that seem to be you know kind of putting together their own series that are doing well. Well, they keep putting out all these different little miniseries because, like you said, I think it's they started out with Radiant Red, I think it was, and then it was Radiant Black, and then, like you said, the Rogue Sun. Like they were really expanding on this fucking world that he's setting up. So, like, I remember hearing really good things about the. Yeah, the I think book. I think it's like a super massive. You did, yeah. One shot a while ago, right. but it's probably like a lot of Power Ranger stuff, so it didn't really connect with me. It's funny because the writer who wrote that series did write the Power Rangers comic series prior to doing yeah. that for Boom, so uh, Boom Comics. So maybe that's what he basically was uh, channeling over with this stuff, right? So, yeah, I got Almighty number four. I don't know what that is. The Ambassadors number four. Yeah, this one I'm going to be reading. This is a Mark Miller book. Um, I'll, I'll be reading this at least digitally when it comes out because uh, – I always read his series. I like them. And uh, a lot of these things I've been reading online lately because I always buy the trades. So to avoid double dipping, I've been uh, I've been reading them online here and talking about them. But um, always works with good artists. This Ambassador series is interesting because each issue is supposed to be with another different good artist. Uh, and they're all introducing a character from somewhere around the world that's gotten superpowers, essentially. So like each issue is going to be like a one and done story with a different artist and this guy always works with great artists about like a different character from somewhere around the world so uh this was in brazil looks like so yeah i'm interested in that i i'm I'm down for that uh looks like two issues are coming out this month black coat black black cloak number five kelly thompson I read the first issue of this. I don't think I talked about it on the show. I wasn't into this. This is very high fantasy type shit. I like her as a writer. Wasn't into that though. Blood Tree number four. I read that. I talked about the first issue, I think a few weeks ago on the show. 
Um, probably not going to revisit that. It's kind of a crime story, but it wasn't that great. Dark Ride 6, this is really good. I'm going to pick up, I picked up the trade of this. I, it hasn't come out yet. I think it comes out next week, actually. Dead Romans 3. I don't know. Any of this look interesting to you, Chris? No, I haven't. Deep Cuts 2, The Forge mm -hmm. 3. This I'm picking up, The the Forge. I'm picking this up. Uh, uh, but these are uh, magazine-sized issues, something that Chris will definitely not pick up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of cool. They said that like they're trying to go for like a heavy metal magazine type vibe in this. So yeah, maybe I'll try and give it a read. Yeah, maybe even check it out online if you're not sure about it, Chris. This sounds like it's going to be fun. Like all the solicits about it have always sounded like they're going to do. That's what they said. They're going for like a me heavy metal type vibe. So I was like, okay, yeah, I I'm down for this. And they, every issue seems like they're they're talking about like aliens and guns and all this kind of crazy shit going on. So I'm like, okay, it sounds cool. I'm picking this up for sure. Fucking giant cock Jew. <laughs> this is meant to be a funny name because instead of kaiju is cockju and the solicitation for the first issue which i don't think we talked about uh last month but i pre-ordered it basically said that this is a big horny monster essentially that's going to destroy a city <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh it's writ written by jerry duggan who who writes uh x-men right now chris for marvel he's the writer yeah. on that so like this sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun and I think this is another one of those like three or four issue series that they're coming out with. So I, I'm on board. This sounds like a, a hell of a lot of fun. Definitely check this out, guys. See, like, look, it says, it says King King Dong here, giant monster mm -hmm. with very, very physical needs. San Francisco is under threat from King Dong, if you will. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely gonna read that. It just sounds ridiculous. You reading Gunslinger Spawn anymore, Chris? Or no, I fell off that. Uh, but it was always good. Okay. Uh, Hexware number six. No. Hey Kids Comics, the schlock of the new. I haven't read any of these. These are apparently just chronicling the history of comics and all this kind of stuff, but I haven't really been into this. I'm not in the, I'm not a huge Howard Chaykin fan. The guy who's writing and drawing that. I hate this place. Number eight. This is actually another horror story. That's really uh, interesting. It's written by the same guy who writes where monsters lie. Mm -hmm. I read the first trade paperback of this. This is one worth checking out. I'm not reading it in issues because I, 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 I'm reading it in trade. It was, but if you guys are interested in where monsters lie or you like this guy, Kyle Starks, this is a really good story as well. Another good horror story that's not like your typical horror stuff. Uh, Indigo Children and Mortal Surgeons. No, no. Junk Rabbit. I don't know what the hell that is. No idea. Kaya. I'm already reading this. I talk about it on the show. This is a good series. I really like this one. Uh, King Spawn 22. You read this? No. No. Last Barbarians 4. I think I read the first issue of this. This of last... last. Yeah? You like it? I think so. Is that the girl or something? Yeah. It came out, I think, a week or two ago. Yeah. It's, it's... That was okay. Okay. I mean, you know, if I got some time on my hands and I see it out there, I'll probably read this. Okay. Yeah, I did hear another comic podcast that I listened to review it. One one guy really liked it. The other one was so-so with it. So, I mean, yes, yeah, so there you go. Uh, Brian Haberlin, I think, who's the writer and artist of this, was a guy on Spawn for a long time, though, if that means anything to some of you guys out there. Uh, Little Monsters 13. This is the series finale, so I guess I wasn't alone. and It didn't last too long. I guess this wasn't uh, a big hit with folks. I'll probably will check this out once it's all collected, though. Um, you know, like I said, I like the team, but it, it just didn't, you know, didn't seem as interesting to me as some of his other stuff. Local man number four. I might keep reading this online. I really like that first issue we talked about. Uh, I talked about, I think last week it was, that wasn't bad. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, love everlasting seven. I dropped this, but, uh, you know, that was all right. Magic order four, number five, again, a series that I read and trade, but all four first three of the mini series were excellent this is a mark miller book um so yeah i highly this is supposed to be a netflix show at some point i don't know what's going on with that but these are all really good monarch four no nemesis reloaded this has been all right last yeah, issue, like, yeah so you know we'll see about that uh nightclub this is the finale of this the conclusion also has been enjoyable yep special double I'll size keep reading that for sure yeah no one number three. I don't know what that is. Uh, Noctera. Is this the end of this? No, still going. Wow. 
Yeah, I was sort of into that for a while. I just kind of fell off, but uh, that was a decent story. I've been buying it in trade. I've been reading it. I've read the first two trades. It's been, yeah, it's been not bad. Old dog number four. This got pushed back. This is supposed to come out already. And, uh, but I've dropped this series. It just wasn't clicking with me. As you guys may have remember, I've talked about it on the show before. Ordinary gods, 12 phantom road three. Yeah. Definitely keeping with that. That's been good. Saga 65. Eh, I, I mean, I, I don't know, man. I just haven't loved this. Like I used to. And I think it's a very overhyped series. And it hasn't reached the greatness is that everyone liked it, liked for that series originally. I don't know. It's, just, it's been okay. Fucking Savage Dragon 266. Kudos to Eric Larson. Still fucking making it happen, eh? He's still the writer and artist of this series. That's crazy. All the way from ni the 90s. Spawn, although obviously has gone on for longer, Todd never has drawn an issue since like 20, like 24 issues into that series, so... You know, Scorch number 18. You, you're on board for this, right? I think I'm still in Scorch. I haven't read it, though. I bought the last few issues. Nice cover. Yeah, well, free those covers keep on getting me, for sure. Yeah. Spawn 342. Uh, Stoneheart 3. Summoner's War Awakening. Terror War. I don't know. Time Before Time, I read in trade. This has been decent. Torrent number 4. Vanish 7. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah, we're still on board. Look at these covers for this series. Hold on. There's that one. That one. Like, they're all fucking banger covers. Yeah. All great covers. Like, uh, very good. I don't even know which one to get every time because I'm like, you know, do I get the Stegman one? Do I get the Daniel Warren Johnson one, who I love? The Do a Powerbomb artist? Like, so good. Yeah, so that's... Oh, a lot of them there. Yeah. They got all the black and white variants, it looks like, too. Walking Dead Deluxe. Again, this is just the same series, guys. Just colored... And uh, what's the first furthest place from here? 13. I read the first trade of this. I didn't love it. World tree number two. Yes. I don't know where the cover went for this. There it is. Um, I'm picking this up. This is the new James Tynion, uh, Tinian book. I like his stuff, uh, but I, I wasn't really on him earlier on. So there's a lot of series I haven't been able to pick up in issues. I've just like read and trade and everything else other than his Batman. But um, a new horror story is from him and image. I'm in. So, yeah, that's it for image solicitations for May 2023. Some good ongoing things there we've talked about already on the show and some other interesting things. So, yeah, uh, you know, stay tuned and, uh, yeah, let us know what you're looking forward to checking out. All right, Chris, what are you picking up next week, man? I'm going to have a list here. Oh, Let's see. For that matter. Well, I got my, uh, Mary Jane Black Cat 4 coming out. Amazing Spider-Man 21. Avengers 66, X-Men 20. I'll probably read that X-23 and yes. the Nightcrawlers too. I'll, I'll give it a read there. Just see what's going on in, the, in that Sins of Sinister uh, saga, let's say. Yeah. And from uh, DC, got Batman 133. And I think I'm reading Poison Ivy 10 and the Batman and Joker Deadly Duo. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Not a huge week uh, for me for physical releases again, uh, in terms of issues I'm picking up. Uh, same thing. Batman 133, Batman Joker, Deadly Duo 5, Amazing Spider-Man 21, and X-Men 20, and Mary Jane and Black Cat number four. That's that's what I'm picking up in physical releases and ones I'm reading online digitally. Uh, Avengers 66, Fantastic Four 5. Uh, I'm going to join you then if you're going to check out the X-23. X-23 Deadly Regenesis number one, Nightcrawlers 2. And I might check out Adventures uh, Superman John Kent because it's a six issue mini series, which I, yeah. I, you know, I, I fell off the main series of that that uh, Tom Taylor was writing. I might check this out. We'll see. I, I also clear number one, which is the first of a three issue series from Scott Snyder. It comes out from Dark Horse Comics mm -hmm. next week. Um, I'm gonna check that out too because I, I I like his stuff for the most part. So that's a first of a three issue series that comes out from Dark Horse. It originally came out digitally because he has a Comicsology deal that all of his comics have been coming out digitally first, and uh, and then the physical release issues are gonna be coming out now. Um, so I'll I maybe get we'll give it a read uh, online next week. So yeah, I wonder if all these online stuff uh, like the Substack are really kind of cashing out the way they thought because it doesn't seem like it. Well, I was just about. It's funny you mentioned that because I was just hearing uh, uh, some other podcast podcasters that are pretty plugged into the business side of things talk about it this past week, and it's funny you mentioned that. Apparently, 
it has not panned out the way they wanted it to. It, it yeah, seemed right. like a flood of interest came at the start of it, but what I think they're like a year or so into this type of thing so far, and um, many people, much more people, are disappointed in the output from the creatives than uh, than that was expected. And I think a lot of people they're seeing a huge drop off in interest and and subscriptions all of a sudden now. So like, yeah, it might be good for you know the big comic companies. Like you know these guys are gonna have to you know kind of get some money back. Well, I, I think the nice thing about this is is anything that they have been able to put out out online, you're seeing them take them the publishers now yeah. and, and 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 obviously because they're trying to maybe recoup maybe money and time that they put into it through these other publishers. And I'm happy because I didn't venture down that road with a lot of that shit. And yeah, like, me I would like I would like to read these series though that they've been doing, right? But the thing Well, I'd is, like to see them back in the you know, yeah. back in the spring of things, you know, do writing you know, kind of character stuff, like, you know, for the, the big companies, which I'm sure they're, they'd be happy to have them back. Yeah. I think James Tynan is the only, I think, because he was the one that first kind of went over there and said, like, this is what I'm doing now. Uh, he's probably been the one who's been the most successful from this move. And he was the first big comic guy who went over there that basically uh, encouraged a lot of his uh, yeah. fellow creators to come over there. But I feel like, um, their success with it has not been anywhere near as his success with this, th this venture. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, and I've been hearing some complaints from folks that have signed up for certain, uh, people's sub stacks who haven't really been delivering on the promise of, uh, content that they uh, originally had said was going to be over there. Right. So they're kind of yeah. like, there's a lot of people <laughs> dropping their subscriptions now as a result so yeah i mean listen i'm not against these guys finding new avenues to make money and stuff like yeah, that i'm not against them trying but uh it, i was felt bad like you know they'd leave the company say yeah i'm done with this and, you know i'm gonna go focus on my own stuff but you know there's still good stories to, to be put out there well that's the thing i think i think that's it's it's you need a good fan base in order to make a move like this with you right and yeah. uh you know i think it's one thing saying hey i'm no longer working for the big two but I'm going to go and do things with dark horse and image and creator own stuff. Okay. Like I'm all for that. But as soon as you go to another platform and like my stuff, your stuff isn't as accessible for me as a result anymore. Like you just said, you're kind of really taken away from the, the industry that you are a part of and yeah. it, it hurts. It hurts the industry in a way. So like when they first announced this move, I was just like, yeah, good for you guys, but I'm not buying any fucking sub stacks, right? Yeah, I was just like, you know, spend enough money as it is, not uh, yeah, you know, whatever, 20, 30 bucks a month, uh, yeah, you know, subscriptions for these guys. So, and and that was the thing. It's not like you could just get one subscription. Yeah, and it was a blanket subscription for all, everybody over there. It was it's, individual. It's yeah, yeah. So. Uh, Cause at first I was like, Oh yeah, maybe. And then I found that out. I was like, I'm out. Like, I'm not fucking paying for individual people like that. Like, it's like that same amount that you like a couple of those, you're paying the same amount as like a Netflix or something all of a sudden. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. No. So, uh, that's what they called it. Oh, it's like the fucking Netflix or comics or something. You know what I mean? Like all these, like, if it know, was like that where, you know, you just buy Substack and, uh, you know, if they get more artists, it's just more content for them. But like you say, if you got to pay for it individually, I can get expensive. And it's well, expensive enough as it is. Sure, but then slowly but surely, every single series that they've gone out like have that has been produced over on Substack by these creators have found their way to a physical release through comic yeah. companies. So like, there's really no need. Like as soon as I started seeing that happening, and like th that they're able to do that with their own properties, which yeah, of course that's yeah. good, that's great for the creator. I'm like, well, I'm not fucking doing it for sure then because I'll just wait to read it then. Like Public Domain yeah. by Zdarsky, all this Tinian stuff. Uh, yeah. Like I just said, the Scott Snyder comicsology stuff. All this stuff has come out in print, guys. So like if you're worried about missing out, like don't. Like because that's what I was worried about because I'm like, oh, I would like to read a lot of these things. You know, you may, you may have to wait a little bit longer to check them out, but it's they're all coming out in print. Every Everything. Everything's coming out in print. So it's just like, why bother, right? Yeah. So anyways, you know, that's, uh, that's, you know, but I'm not against the creators getting, you know, like I said, more, more revenue streams. That's cool. Like, good for you. Do what you have to, you can, right. Like to keep you going, but I don't think that's the solution. And the long-term solution to saving the comic book industry is you fucking going over to a subscription service. Yeah. Right? So, you know, 
I, I, I support artists by with my hard earned dollars through their books, wherever they go. Right. You know what I mean? The guys I really like, that's how I show my support. I'm not going to necessarily travel over and, and you know, subscribe to your newsletter though. Right. So sorry to say, uh, anyways, uh, all right, guys, our favorite book of the week. Uh, uh I don't know. Let me see. I don't you know know. What? I'm going to go with human target 12 because I think it was a, uh, a good end to a great series. So I got to give it, I give the nod to human target 12 for the, for the finale. Yeah. I don't know. I might have to get the, I might have to give it the same human target was in there, but that was a good ending to a good series yeah. that, you know, kind of crept up on me and, uh, yeah, I thought it was good. I, I will say though, um, I'll get the runner up this week would have been War Monsters Lie number two for me because I'm still really enjoying that series. It was it's pretty good. You're, you're taking everything right out of me. <laughs> I, I was going to say the War Monsters Lie, but you know, that's just the second issue. This was a 12, 12 issue series. Yeah. And uh, that's about all I can say there. I just feel bad I didn't have a physical copy as, of, as my favorite, but I only picked up two copies this week. Right. 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 Well, that's okay though. You know, the, the, you know, go, go check those out guys. You know, like I said, those, those are some good stuff this week. Uh, even, even when a lot of the, you know, the st other things are lacking, uh, you know, look for other stuff. That's, that's a good way of not experiencing comic burnout. I will say that look in other avenues, check out different things. Uh, you know, even if you have to read something digitally, check it out that way. If you don't want to commit to buying the physical release of these things, like, uh, because you know, that's how you come across new stuff, right? Like, I think it's important not just to read big two superhero stuff constantly. I think it's good to mix it up with some other stuff now and then. And what's it like boom dynamite, uh, this great like, coffin comics. It will got you know, some fun stories out there. Yeah. Yeah. No, and you never know when you're going to find like, you know, maybe that's where a, a new writer is cutting their teeth. And that's, you know, you'll be coming out. Well, that's what I mean. That's what I was just saying about, you know, I may not have supported them in terms of the sub stack just because I don't believe in that way of putting comics out despite reading things digitally. Um, but I will follow creators on other, uh, what, you know, if they're writing other things, other characters, I may not even love for other companies even, or other creator owned books, follow the people you enjoy because a lot of the time you'll be happy with, if you're, if you like a writer's voice or you like what he does generally for the big two, go check out his creator own book, right? Like, honestly, like it's worth it because a lot of the time, like you're going to find something, that he actually is maybe even putting more of himself into as a result, because like he, this is something he owns and he cares about as opposed to just phoning in some fucking, you know, yeah. Spider-Man story or some <clears throat> Batman story. Right. So, which, you know, sometimes these guys can get into the habit of doing, right. Not to say they don't have love for these characters. That's the whole reason why these guys work in this genre. This is the reason why we continue to read them. Right. So I think, I, I, I think it's, it's, it, you know, not, I'm, that's what I mean. I don't want to fucking put down superhero stuff. I love superhero stuff. We read so much of it every week, but it's just like, check out some of the creator own stuff too. There's some good stuff out there. So yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Chris, thank you as always, always fun talking about comics with you and uh, we'll see everyone next week. All right. Sounds good. Later, man. Later.